It is Wednesday afternoon and I am out here working on the pond. It's a nice temperature, a bit overcast. Um, some rain, thunder showers expected later today. So I'm hoping to get um, some work done. What I did pick up this morning uh, was this item here, which is actually a fill valve for the, uh, the pond that I'm going to be using. And this is what the unit itself looks like. A very simple connection on the top. And that's the float in there. Rather than a lot of the standard valves that you do see that have the little float that goes up and down depending on the water connected to an arm, which is then connected to the filling point, um, this has a diaphragm inside it that functions under very little pressure to uh, allow water in and out as required. So what I am going to be doing is installing it into the, or should say, through the wall of the pond and I'll show you where that's going to go in just a moment here. So what I am going to be doing is, um, in the wall of the pond here, I am going to be putting the uh, pipe. It's actually going to go under this piece of the wall. And I don't know why I did it when I put the wall together now, a few years ago. It's all stuck together with construction adhesive, except this piece for some reason. As you can see, no adhesive on it on either side. I have no idea why I left that, but this is actually working out quite well. I have marked along, you can see the lines here, that will take the pipe once it's carved out. I'm going to do that in a few minutes with my concrete saw. The pipe will then run through here and into the pond to the device I just showed you. That'll come out, uh, run down here, and then go underground over to the fence on my property line here which will then run to a hose or a line connected to the water supply from the house. Uh, once this is functioning properly, the water level, which is down a little bit now, will be maintained at the fun optimal functioning level. And uh, that will make it much easier for me when I'm doing a filter cleaning, as I'm doing at the moment. I have just finished cleaning the upflow filters. Extremely dirty. I'm doing those every single day. Um, they're doing a great job. The easy pod is boiling away, as you can see, I just did that one. Moving bed filter is working great. And the pump chamber is uh, is doing its thing. Now I'm just going to get into the uh, pond, or into the pit here, and I will show you something in relation to the water level in here, which is why I'm doing a fitting directly into the pond and not into the pump chamber. All right, I'm down in the filter pit. You can see the pump chambers I mentioned. And if you notice the, the water level here, right now the secondary pump, which is the one on the left-hand side, is feeding the upflow filters. The main pump on the right-hand side is turned off. That's the one that feeds the easy pod filters. When this pump is off, the primary pump, um, that's the level the water stays at in here. If the primary pump is on and the upflow filter pump is off, the water level drops down to just there, just above that line in the barrel. Um, if both pumps are running, which they normally are, the water level is at that line or slightly below. And fitting a float valve of some kind in here uh, presented its challenges because of the varying water levels depending on which pump is running. If all the pumps are turned off, and I will show you that just momentarily. So I've turned off the, the main switch for the upflow as well as for the other pump. And we'll just wait a moment, but you can see the water rising here. And you'll see the water line coming up to around here, maybe a little bit higher in a moment. And that would be the issue. So if the pumps are off and the water level rises kind of to this point, there would be no water going through the valve into the pond, which would be fine because everything is turned off. When the pumps are running, and I've turned the upflow pump back on now, you can see the water level drop. If the upflow filters are running and the main easy pod filters are running and the water level drops down to the point I mentioned a moment ago, and the float valve was sitting in here somewhere, and that would be constantly adding water to the pond when it wasn't necessary. Once it is situated in the pond directly, 
um, it will be based on the actual water level in the pond and not what's happening in the filters themselves. So I'm going to uh, get working on that, try and cut that groove into the, uh, the block and I will show you once I'm done. I'm not going to video that, it's going to be very noisy, very dusty and you know it's just again a matter of using my saw to kind of chisel out that area. So I will show you that once I am done and uh, we'll get back to you in a little bit. It is Sunday morning, July 31st, and right now it is a very comfortable, about 23, 24 degrees. We are expecting temperatures in the mid to upper 30s a little bit later on in the day, so I'm out here trying to get the uh, float valve for the pond installed, and I'll take you over and show you what I've done um, so far on that. Um, I have been very, very busy for the past three days, so really didn't get much done uh, with regard to the install. Uh, I'm hoping to get that all in and completed today. And while I am working on the install itself, I'm going to clean the upflow filters. I do this pretty much every day. And you can see the, the color, hopefully, of the, the water that's in there and the debris. Um, I'm going to get them into the cleaning mode in just a few moments. And I will show you um, the water that is discharged from them after the cleaning just to give you an idea of what they are collecting for me so I'm very happy with that. Um, the rest of the filtration in the pit is doing very very well and I'm quite happy with the way things are running. So this I'm just going to put the camera down for a moment here and get the outflow filters in cleaning mode. I'll show you that in just a moment. And then I'll move over to the pond and show you what I have done as far as the uh, initial stages of the install for the float valve. So I will be back with you in just a few moments. The, the upflow pump has now been turned off and it's boiling in here as you can see. And if you take a close look, hopefully it's not too much glare on the tubes here. You can see the condition of the water that is inside um, both of these, just indicating how much debris that these filters are collecting. So I'm going to let those boil for you know, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll get back and uh, give them a dump of the water. I'm going to collect some of the water as I release it, and we'll show you what it looks like, um, what's coming out of there as well. So right now, um, of course, the, the shower is off because it's being fed from the upflows. That'll get going soon. Um, the easy pods are running so the fish still have filtration. And the, uh, the water is working well. The easy pods are working well. Um, the fish are enjoying their time out here. They're doing quite well and thoroughly enjoy being outside. So what I have done with regard to the install of the float valve, which is just uh, sitting right there. Um, what I did mention in the earlier part of the video was removing this block here and channeling it out to put the pipe in, and I have done that. So you can see that that has been uh, channeled out. I put in a temporary um, pipe here for the up for the valve to connect to so what it's going to do is come through there which will run underneath that stone um, feed down there and because of the configuration of the wall down here I've had to put a couple elbows in this is gonna feed here down um, underground into this pipe here there's actually some irrigation tubing which will be run through the PVC conduit here um, just to help give us some protection and it's going to run along the fence line where we'll connect up to the water supply at the house. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig a channel to allow this, um, this line here to go underground and then once that is done the pipe will be buried in there. Uh, it will get connected to the piping that you see there. Now none of that has been glued together yet. It's just strictly there to uh, for a fitting as far as how everything is going to go. And as far as I can tell, based on sort of an earlier uh, kind of fitting also, the 
pipe that I have here on the, the valve itself should be at the adequate height to get the water level where it needs to be to maintain the proper level in the pond. At least that is my hope. So as like I say, right now it's a matter of getting out the, uh, the shovel and getting the trench dug so that I can get this conduit with the line running through it buried. Uh, once that's done, I can connect the end of the pipe to the uh, plumbing pieces there and get the valve installed. So that's my, my goal for today. I'm going to get working on that now. And I'll leave those uh, flow filters uh, cleaning for a while. And then I will get uh, drain them and let you see what's coming out of them. And hopefully be able to show you in a little while um, that this valve is installed and working properly. So I will be back with you hopefully in just a little bit. The upflow filters have been running for about 20-25 minutes now. So I've done one drain and as you can see I'm doing another boil on them because they're still quite dirty. This is what came out of the filter uh, for the first uh, dump of it. And hopefully you can see, I'll try and get it a little bit into the, the sun here if I can. Uh, you can see definitely some algae in there. Um, the water is very, very green. Um, so the K Plus Media is doing a marvelous job at collecting um, a lot of fines and debris that are in the filters. Uh, and as I said, um, I'll get a little closer with the camera here. This is the second boil. And you can see just how uh, dirty this still is. So I'm going to let this go again for another few minutes while I work on my float valve installation. And again, things are, are running very well in the filter pit while that is going on. And a nice part, as I'd mentioned in a previous video, is by having the two pumps, um, I can keep one set of filters going so the easy pods are still running to the midwater returns. The upflow filters, of course, are turned off at the moment to allow for the cleaning process to take place. And uh, while that is going on, of course, the fish are you know, staying quite happy in the pond here with the, uh, the aeration from the bottom dome. And the fact that the two midwater returns are, you know, functioning quite nicely. They are going to get um, their treat of silkworm pupa a little bit later on today. Uh, like I say, hopefully by that time I will have uh, the float valve in and running. And if you look at the water level in here, uh, you can see how it's dropped down pretty much to the bottom of that first um, block there. And that is sort of well below what the normal operation level should be for the pond to keep the filters working uh, the way they were intended. So what I'm going to do is, uh, while I'm still working on my fill valve, and I now have the, uh, the trench is, is dug, or for the most part, and that conduit is, is going to come along through the trench um, from the, the pond here. I'm going to run along underground where it'll just run along the fence and it's protected along there so I'm not too worried about that. It was more just this part where there's going to be all the foot traffic and you know cutting the grass etc etc. So I wanted to have that buried and out of the way. Um, so I'm going to continue on and get that done while the upflows are getting their second uh, cleaning. And while that is going on I'm going to put the hose um, in the pond here and start topping up the water because if it drops much lower um, when I do the upflow clean what it will do is cause the float switch that is in the pump chamber here and that's uh, so you can see things there that's my pump chamber uh, the float switch is I don't know if you can see if my finger there or not is right there if the water level gets much lower when that second pump is turned on um, then it's going to shut both pumps off until the water level achieves the proper level in the pond. So I'm going to just get the hose going on that now. I'm going to continue with the upflow cleaning. I'm going to continue with the install for the um, conduit here to be able to get the valve in place. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier in the video, none of the connections on the, the white pipe here you see right there none of those have been glued yet 
Um, I'll be doing that in a few moments. I didn't want to do anything until I was sure how things are going to kind of come together out here. So I'm going to get working on that. Uh, hopefully we'll have it running in the very next few minutes. But in the meantime, I am going to uh, get the hose in there, as I said, just to top the level up to keep the filters functioning. And then I'll give it a test with the, the flow valve on there uh, once everything is in place. So I will be back with you all shortly. It is now about 11.30 on Sunday morning. I have finished the installation of the new um, float valve for the pond. I just have to uh, fill the trench in here once I've given it a test to make sure that there's no leaks or anything like that. Uh, you can see that it's uh, down in place there. And while I'm kind of doing that, just give you a, a quick viewing here. This is my latest pond decor. Uh, what would a Canadian pond be without a Canadian beaver, which is our country's national animal. So I just picked this little fella up recently and he will be kind of gracing the pond. I know it's not uh, kind of oriental related, but again, Canadian pond, Canadian beaver there. So I'm going to turn the hose on now and I will uh, come back and check for leaks. So I'm just going to put the camera down for a moment while I do that to get the hose turned on and uh, be back with you uh, momentarily. Okay, the water is on. I'm just checking here for uh, for any potential leaks. Uh, this fitting down here runs into that irrigation hose I mentioned earlier, which just goes through the pipe, which is for protection. Uh, doesn't seem to be any leaks coming from my fittings there. And doesn't appear to be any coming from in here. Now I'm not actually sure if I'm getting water through that valve or not. At the moment I'm not hearing anything and I'm not uh, sure if I've got it kind of set. I may need to to raise it up a little bit. Um, it is pretty much at the water line I had set originally. Uh, if, which is, you know, basically where I want the water to be when it's fully functional. So I'm going to leave it on for now, just to check and see how things are coming. Um, I may do a bit of an adjustment to raise it slightly and to get a bit more water flow coming through there. I'll just have to wait and see. The level is down a little bit from where I normally have it, um, but only fractionally. So I'm going to leave, leave it turned on for now and see what happens. And while I'm waiting for uh, any eventual you know, problems with it, today is Sunday, which means it is silkworm treat time for the koi. So I'm going to throw some in there now and give everybody here a their Sunday treat. They absolutely love these things. And you can see that they're all, uh, all coming up to enjoy them. They'll probably get a little bit of uh, mealworm treat later on today as well. And what the silkworm pupa are definitely one of their favorites. And I'm very glad that I decided to purchase these and give them a try. Because uh, the fish do really deserve treats from time to time as uh, most of the pond keepers um, that I've seen from the UK on your videos constantly treating the fish with all kinds of things and you know like any of our pets they deserve to be spoiled so as I said I'm just going to let them enjoy that um, the water level is pretty much right on where I had adjusted it or set the pipe originally I made a little mark on the float valve itself so it seems to be operating see, where I intended it, for the most part, as I said, I may need to make a little adjustment later on. Just have to wait and see. I'm going to uh, leave things turned on for now, and I will be cleaning the EasyPod filters a little bit later on today, so that will definitely um, drop the level in the pond, which will give me the opportunity to see if this is uh, the float valve is going to work and we just take it from there. So today is kind of a, a trial period. Uh, I do have to go out a little bit later on uh, for a test over to the hospital. 
So when I do that this afternoon, I'm going to turn the water off because I don't want any issues back here in case something goes awry. Um, other than that, I will be here all day to uh, pop out from time to time and check this, and I will certainly know better once the uh, easy pods have been cleaned and the water level in the pond drops. And if all is looking well, then I'm going to fill the trench back in, and uh, fingers crossed that we're good to go. So I'm hoping that everything is done, and I'll provide another uh, update a little bit later on um, this afternoon, just to let you know whether or not my uh, plumbing work was uh, successful or not. I uh, will be back shortly. It is approximately quarter past six on Sunday evening, and I'm pleased to say that the float switch there is in place. It seems to be uh, holding at the level that I had previously marked on it, so that's a good. Uh, the plumbing here is still holding, no issues with water leakage whatsoever. And again, the gray one, I know it looks uh, bent there. The fittings that is strictly to protect the tubing that's going through. Um, I'm going to leave the trench exposed until probably sometime tomorrow afternoon just to ensure that nothing happens with the, uh, the pipes, um, any movement or anything like that that might cause a leak. But I think I'm doing well with that um, as it stands right now. And I'll just take you over and show you how I have it connected to the, the hose bib coming out of the house. So this is it here. Uh, you can see that this is the, the pipe and the fitting on there, and what they call a quick disconnect. Um, that fitting itself is dripping ever so slightly, but it is not the connection for the um, valve that's leaking itself. It's just that actual fitting. So that seems to be doing the job. And what I am doing at the moment is I had just started the cleaning of the first easy pod filter. So I'm going to let that run for, you know, probably 15, 20 minutes at least on that one, just to uh, give it a thorough clean. And it is extremely dirty, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to sort of climb down into the pit here, just to give you a bit closer look at uh, the filter itself. And you can see the color of the, uh, the muck and the blue that's coming out in there. Definitely a mess, but uh, the filter is doing its job. Um, the second one will get cleaned after that one is finished. And you can see the difference if you look in here how clear this one is. Um, so the first filter is definitely uh, taking the bulk of the waste before the water gets into the second filter and then in turn into the moving bed. And um, as I had mentioned previously, I do have the, the second air pump here, which is strictly for cleaning the easy pods and the upflow, and that's what's powering this one now. Um, the other pump here is providing the air into the bottom drain and to the moving bed. So definitely a big difference having the, uh, the second air pump functioning. This is the first year I've done that. I always turn the air off before and just let the one pump run, but this year I decided you know, second pump is going to be a good idea. I've got it. In the event that I do have a pump failure of this one, um, I can always swap this one over in a matter of a few moments. And when it comes cleaning, then I would deal with that at the time for another pump. Uh, but as I said, I'm going to let this run for probably, you know, half an, well, 20 minutes to half an hour, somewhere in that range. I will do a dump on it. I will do another cleaning on it. And the same on the second filter. And see how the uh, float valve functions for me. Uh, fingers crossed that it's going to do its job. Um, it did run a little bit earlier uh, when the water level was down ever so slightly from doing the uh, upflow filters. But right now, as I said, I'm just waiting um, for the easy pods to clean and then I will come out and get another um, quick shot of the valve hopefully in action. Uh, again, you can see the, the fish here. They're going to be getting a treat of some peas in just a few minutes. Um, I have them here. They came out of the freezer, so they're just warming up outside right now. Actually, I'm just going to move them over beside the pond, uh, put them in the sun so they will warm up more quickly. I like them to get up to at least room temperature, maybe a little warmer before I give it to the fish. Um, so that will, that will be their treat. 
and they love them thoroughly, I will uh, not be sort of doing a video when reading those because the peas all sink to the bottom. You won't see the fish really consuming them at that point. Um, so what I will do, however, is that is once the uh, filters have finished cleaning, I will definitely come out and uh, keep an eye on the valve to see how that's functioning. And I'm presuming that as the water level drops slightly from even emptying the easy pod for the first rinse, that the valve is going to kick in and start letting some water in. Um, so if that does happen, I will definitely do a quick uh, segment for the video of that as well. So I will be back out uh, very well in the next half hour or so to uh, start the, the filter cleaning so I can do the second dump and get that going. And we'll do a quick update on the, the valve uh, as it does its job. I will be back with you in just a little while. The first dump on the Easy Pod has been done, and the float valve. Try and get a bit closer so you can kind of see it in action here. So with just one dump of the Easy Pod, the level has dropped. Um, ever so slightly, but enough to trigger the valve back into action. So it's doing exactly what I was hoping it would do. Uh, the water's not flowing in terribly quickly at the moment because there's not uh, a big drop in the water. And if you look at the bricks over here, you can see the moisture line or where the dampness is that has dropped ever so slightly. And again, the valve, you can see in here that it is doing its thing. Well, so far, so good. Um, I'm having the Easy Pod I'm getting a second boil now. And once this one is done, in about another 15 minutes or so, I'm going to come out and do the second one, do the same thing. And hopefully, um, because of the changes made to the, uh, to the pond with the addition of the float valve, it will just continue to fill, keep the level up at the operating um, point where it is supposed to be to maintain the, uh, the filters. And I am very pleased with how things are going at the moment. Just going to check those peas I mentioned a few moments ago here, see how they're doing temperature-wise. Um, still a bit chilly, but definitely good to go. So I'm going to throw some in now for the fish. And as I said, you can kind of see them going down after them because they do all sink. Uh, and they will go down the bottom and clean them all up. And I'm not sure if you can kind of see that or not, but everybody is headed to the bottom. There are a few peas that are, are floating up here. Um, they will get theirs very shortly, but they will clean up the ones on the bottom first. And because of the layout of the pond, I do not have a skimmer on it. So any peas that are still kind of floating around or any food or anything that goes in, I don't have to worry about skimmer issues. So that is not an issue for me at all. And the remaining peas that I have here are going to be going into the house. I have um, four small koi still indoors. I have two tosai and two nisai that are in there. So they will be getting the peas. Um, I didn't bring them out this year. You know, because I was having issues with the, the leakage and so on, I wanted to make sure everything was sorted. Uh, because they are smaller fish, um, if they're in here, I may not be able to see them in the fall, depending on growth, of course. Um, they're doing well. They are definitely growing downstairs, and they're sharing the indoor pond with the sturgeon. So that's uh, working out well for everybody down there. They'll be out here next year for sure, but uh, I just wanted to make sure things are going to work out now. Um, and again, just another quick look at the valve here. You can see that it is uh, functioning exactly the way it was intended to do. And again, the uh, level, I'm sure, will drop even more with the dumping of the next uh, clean on Easy Pod here, as well as the second Easy Pod and that'll give the, uh, the valve a good workout, but it seems to be doing, um, as I said, what it was intended for. It's holding the water level. Um, 
almost at the mark that I had put on it initially. Again, it's going to continue to just kind of fill slightly while uh, the Easy Pod volume is replaced, and we should be good to go. And as I said, I will be um, checking again um, later on this evening to see how everything is looking, and then I'm going to leave this open overnight and midway through tomorrow to see how things are going as far as leakage and everything is concerned and if all is well and it certainly seems to be at this point um, I'll just fill it back in uh, give the grass a good watering to make sure that it starts to uh, recover in here and I will be a very happy individual so I see the fish are doing well um, the float valve is doing what it's supposed to do the filters have been working awesomely the Upflow filters are doing their job, as you saw earlier in the video. Uh, you can see the water flow coming in from both of them, uh, which is excellent. So far, no major issues with any of my plumbing handiwork. Um, so on that note, that's I'm just going to put you down, and I will uh, get back in a little while uh, with another quick update on the flow valve. Once I've done the Easy Pod clean that's functioning now, as well as on the second Easy well. So I'll be back with you before too long. It is just after 8 o'clock on Monday morning and as you can see the fish are all doing very well and enjoying their time out here in the pond. They had their breakfast about half an hour ago so they're set for now. I am very pleased to report that the float valve that I installed yesterday has been working flawlessly and the plumbing connections that I put in to um, connect the valve to the water supply of the house are still holding very strong. No leakage issues whatsoever, which is great. My little Canadian beaver here is happily sitting beside the pond, uh, checking everything out. And the returns you can see on the far side of the pond there from the upflow filters are working really, really well. Um, fish are very, very happy out here. I wish I had thought of that configuration for my filtration um, years ago. It would have made it much simpler. But I'm glad that everything is working out now. So I'm going to end it there for today. Um, I do have some things to do in the house. And then we'll get out a little bit later to give the grass a cutting. It's getting a little uh, disheveled out here to say the least. Right now the temperature is approximately 20 degrees. Um, beautiful, beautiful sky up there. Just a little bit of light cloud. We are expecting, according to the weather report, um, high humidity this afternoon, which will put our temperature into the mid-30s with the humidity factored in there. So it's going to be another warm day. So I want to get some things done now while it's still comfortable. And... I will provide another update on the float valve, how that is working, and any other little things that may pop up in the meantime. I'll certainly bring up to date on that later on um, in the week. In the meantime, I'm going to end the video here now. So if you haven't already done so, um, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Your support is very much appreciated. And if you are new to the channel or just passing through, I uh, really appreciate it as well if you would hit that subscribe button as your support is very, very much appreciated uh, and makes putting all these videos out uh, not only fun but beneficial. So thank you very much all. Take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.